Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're going to check out Overly Sarcastic Productions' next episode of Journey to the West. This is going to be part 8. Now, this time around, I don't know what we're getting into. Last time around, we had monkeys showing off all the types of immortality in an immortality off with other immortals, who he out-immortaled. Which is a sentence that really doesn't seem like it should make sense, but if you know what I'm talking about, it does, and it's accurate. And that's weird, and I'm glad they did it. So we're going to just see what comes next. I'm going to take a wild guess, and I know this is completely out of the blue, Tripitaka will be captured. I, I, I know. Shocking. No one's going to see that coming. We're going to jump in. You guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. Let's get started. Last time on Journey oh, no. to the West, Tripitaka was once again abducted by a devious river-dwelling demon who was revealed to be the truant nephew of Ao Shun, the oh, Dragon yeah, King yeah. of the West. The With the help of the noble Prince Moang, the demon was defeated and our heroes continued westward, only to Oh yeah, that was the first half. This was a weird one. They combined two different stories about the kidnapping and then the kidnapping again. I honestly forgot about the first half completely. To find themselves the second part was just so in a Buddhist cool. enslaving kingdom ruled by three powerful yep, demons. The immortals. The yep, these immortals. are the ones I remember. With monkeys help Tripitaka passed their numerous tests and won over the fickle-minded king. And with the demons defeated, great. our heroes were free to continue their journey to the west. So ah, title drop. Trekking westward when their way is barred by... Guys, I don't want to jinx it, but I think we're almost there. Why don't you just say that your mother has a braid over her shoulder and you're wondering how she's doing or nothing could possibly go wrong. I mean, literally, that is, I know they're adding this one for a joke, but oh God, even as a joke, it's just, yep, the horse's reaction right there. That's perfect. Also, everyone's reaction to him saying that monkey's like, no, the horse knows better. Pigsy probably believes in Sandy's like, oh, that's nice. This is fun. Again, Sandy, best boy. I... Let me just spin this wheel real quick. A huge river, easily 800 miles wide. Pretty sure that technically qualifies as an inland sea, but long yeah. story short, they're stuck. Surprise, surprise. They spot That's a town nearby and head over for help and quest objectives and end up having dinner with these two rich old brothers who are oh. very nice and don't even get butt hurt when Pigsy single-handedly threatens to eat them out of house and home. But while the town may seem idyllic, we know what to expect from these things by now, and the truth eventually comes Demon. out. This region is ruled by the great king of miraculous power, a being who controls the weather and grants the town rain, but at a hefty price. Every year, the great king requires a sacrifice of two young children children, one boy and one girl from one of the families in town. Why? This year it's the brother's turn. And wouldn't you know it, despite their advanced age, they each manage to have one kid, and these delightful youngsters are their pride and joy, and also the only heirs they have. What a trap! Let's just go with the big question here. Two brothers, living alone, together, with their two children. Let's not read into this. Tragedy this is. After first suggesting that the men just use their immense wealth to buy two replacement children, Monkey remembers he's a good person now and volunteers to- Or we could do plan B! Also buying spare children. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere, but that's a bit too on the one-child policy. Help out by taking the boy's place. He also volunteers Pigsy to replace the girl. And after a lot of complaining, Monkey and Pig- Wow. Oh yeah, Pigsy can shapeshift. I forgot he could do that. Huh. Pigsy disguise themselves as the children and the townspeople carry them to the temple and run off. With a dramatic flourish, the great king appears, and unsurprisingly, he's a big scary demon. But for all his scariness, he's completely unprepared for how nonchalant Monkey is about this whole being sacri- Okay, this, this right here, I absolutely love this. Monkey's like, eh, neat. No cape? Are you taking this seriously? No, no, he's not too. And Pigsy's just like, eh! We're gonna die! I mean, literally, at this point, hasn't he realized the most scary being he could possibly piss off is literally the one he's currently pissing off constantly, Monkey. Uh, Monkey's probably faster than Tripitaka if he really wanted to. Sacrifice thing, and he gets so freaked out he goes after Pigsy instead. Pigsy what? freaks out and changes back, walloping the Great King with his rake and knocking a couple fish scales off him, which makes the Great King freak out and run away. Pigsy and Monkey chase him, and when the demon figures out- Wait. Wait. Was Pixie just useful? Oh, that is. Well, fish scales off after Pigsy instead. Pigsy freaks. Yeah, no. Th I think he was actually useful in all his stupidity. Thing, and he gets so I don't expect everyone to storm heaven, but at least dress like you want to. Oh my god, he's actually. At least one of you understands what's happening. Uh, yeah. 
also I love this face. That's so absolutely hilarious to me because Pigsy is absolutely freaked out right now. So freaked out, he goes after Pigsy instead. Pigsy freaks out and changes back. And they're both the screaming great king with ah. his rake and knocking a couple fish scales off him, which makes the great king fish freak scale. out and run away. Pigsy and Monkey chase him, and when the demon figures out who he's really dealing with, he freaks out even harder and vanishes. Oh, oh, they actually figured it out. You know, a lot of the enemies, oddly enough, have been really smart and tried to avoid fighting Monkey because they know how stupid of an idea that is. And this one is really learning how stupid it is, too. Neat. ...into the river. Pigsy and Monkey figure that between the scales and the river thing, he's probably a river demon, and if they defeat him, they might be able to find a way across. Oh. But that's a problem for after the victory party. With the kids saved and nobody dead, our heroes return to a rousing celebration of their badassery. But not everyone is celebrating, as off in the river, the demon explains to his demon buddies why he didn't bring any leftovers and recounts his daring escape. But this year might not be a total bust. He recognized Pigsy... That monk has to be up there somewhere, but that monkey is no joke. Hmm, yes, no children, but there is a monk who will grant his immortality at everyone else who's tried this, who apparently you know enough about because you know Tripitak is up there and you know who monkey is, but you know what? It's kind of worth it. I mean, sure, we'll die horribly, but this way we might even try and get immortality before monkey finds a way to out immortality us. And we're just going to ignore that part because he's done it three times already. Just, your immortality is only once over, dude. You're not going to survive. Pigsy and Monkey is disciples of Tripitaka, who he's heard is so magically delicious and nutritious that eating him would make them all immortal. But Monkey is so scary, is right. and Pigsy too, I guess, that he's not sure he'll be able to get to Tripitaka at all. But one of the demons has an idea on that front, and oh, with no. her help, the Great King begins hatching a plan. The next day, the gang wakes up to find the town blanketed in a beautiful layer of extremely unseasonal snow. This is very picturesque, but actually not <laughs> Okay, this. This right here, monkey loving a Tripitaka just being nope. I love this entire picture. Also, wow, their image it just compared to the early videos, especially, they've really come a long way in the scene selections. Every now and again, when they do random main shots with the superimposed colorizations, yeah, they've been able to do that. Everyone overly sarcastic. I'm assuming Red's the one drawing this because people keep saying that. It's amazing. This is just a standard shot in background scenery, but it looks really damn polished for what is essentially a throwaway image, and I love it. It's just, just a cool set piece. Good, because Tripitaka was hoping to borrow a boat to cross the river, and with the weather like this, a boat isn't going to do him any good. Plus, I mean, this journey is really starting to drag on. It's really? only been seven or eight years since Tripitaka first left for the West, and all this- That was five years ago. This is two years- 2020, even. Wow, saying that it really is dragging on, that's... <laughs> oh my god. I just... Sorry, I love it when people make outside context references to say like, hey, this took forever to do, because they're actually referring to their experience doing it, not so much in story itself, which in this case, it's both. It just, it's fun to hear those references. The waiting is really getting to him. The old dudes try to cheer him up by serving him tea in their beautiful snowy garden, and Monkey wow. calls Pigsy an absolute cretin for not recognizing the beautiful tranquility of a fresh snowfall. I guess you could call him an uncultured swine. Yeah. <laughs> but as they... <sighs> I would say something, but that would just be boarish. Spend a beautiful afternoon drinking in the wonders of nature and also a bunch of tea. Someone passing by tea. outside laughs. Say, fellow traveler, do you hear that the river is frozen and safe to traverse? I did. How convenient for I at any westward journeys. Well, that seems perfectly safe and logical. I don't think anything would ever be a problem from that direction loudly mentions that the cold snap has frozen the river solid and the people are starting to actually walk across it to start their seasonal trade with the western kingdom of women an empire of only women that lives on the other side well if the river's actually oh oh the kingdom of women is here see the only reason i know that is actually from fake grand order and if you know what i'm talking about uh, you can understand why my entire thought process is oh yay agartha uh, yep. Yeah. ...frozen all the way through, then they can just walk across. No need for a boat or a demon fight. So after first weatherproofing the horse and... Oh yeah, he's actually wearing more clothing. Tripitaka is too, and Pixie isn't in Sandy, isn't it? The horse is weatherproofed. I know she said it, but... The flying horse... Has his hooves covered. The flying dragon horse 
who breathes fire and may or may not be on fire themselves has a blanket covering them and hooves covered hooves which i should point out in normal beings are basically the equivalent of toenails and don't have sensation and it's a flying horse on ice it doesn't i don't even this is one of the few times where i'm starting to think people are right when they say the horse is somehow even less useful than pigsy it shouldn't but it does i don't even oh, okay wow Hold your stuff like this. You'll catch. Wait, catch you if you fall on the ice? Really? How about I jump across and meet you guys on the other side? Yeah. Honestly, that's a good idea. Other than the fact that you're literally crossing over demon territory with Triptocket, only protected by Pigsy, the horse, and Sandy. And honestly, I don't think Sandy's up for every one of them. Because he'd have to cover for these two's flailing, or Pigsy's flailing, and the horse probably ignoring it. And a few lessons from Pigsy and safe ice traversal, our heroes set out along the frozen that? river to continue their journey westward. Or at least that's the plan. The demon smashes through the ice, and everyone but Monkey falls oh, into the water. Shit. Pigsy and Sandy manage to retrieve the horse and their luggage, but Tripitaka is nowhere to be found. And with no okay, I absolutely love this. Pigsy's freezing. The horse is waterlogged as hell, and Sandy actually. It's like a like he's a river demon or something. No better idea is the gang trudges back to town to regroup and think of a plan. Monkey is certain the Tripitaka is still alive, so he tells the old this man to take care of their horse the and dry out their things, while he, Sandy, and Pigsy figure out how to get Tripitaka back. Unfortunately, Monkey is still no good underwater, so Pigsy carries him as they swim down to investigate. They find a massive underwater palace, and Monkey turns into a shrimp. Dude, these colors. Oh my god. They... Because he turned into a shrimp... Oh, yeah, and the tail is still like a little furry, so it still has a monkey tail. And I'm going with it being the type of shrimp that has that. What is it? Oh, I used to know the name of this shrimp, but I'm actually pulling a blank. If anyone knows, let me know. I'm actually very curious. Mostly because I know it's like that shrimp that has all the photoreceptors that are well beyond human vision. And I kind of want to just figure it out because it's supposed to be like really amazing. It's going to bug me. It's going to bug me a lot. And sneaks in, finding Tripitaka alive and well, but stuck in a box. At this point, I'm never taking a bath again. Maybe then demons won't think I'm delicious. Oh my god. It's very unhappy to be stuck in a box and lamenting his frankly terrible luck with rivers. Monkey scoots back out and suggests Sandy and Pixie try to provoke the demons demon and lure him out of the water so the monkey can finish him off. You the know, monk's surviving. Strategy they've tried twice that has literally never worked. But you never know, maybe the third time's the charm. So Monkey pops back to the surface while Sandy and Pixie see about luring the demon out to play. But this time, the demon is actually prepared for a fight and brings oh. out a very impressive looking mace. He and Pixie brag about their respective weapons for a while until Sandy gets bored and attacks. They oh, have a pretty shit. sweet fight and after a few rounds, Pixie fakes defeat and runs for the surface. And when the <laughs> Demon follows, Fake. monkey ambushes him just as planned. But the demon freaks out and does what he does best, aka run away. On the one hand, the plan actually worked. On the other hand, not well enough. But it worked even partially, and that's more than I was expecting. And he's not about to take that bait a second time. I don't think he's going back up. Ugh. <laughs> he's so pissed. Does the cloud work underwater? You know what? In metaphysical metaphysical, I can't speak today, metaphysical sense, probably. In time period of people thinking cloud underwater is probably weirder than talking underwater, so probably not even going to ever come up. So they can't lure him out for another go. So, officially running out of ideas, Plan Monkey C. decides to pay Kuan Yin a visit to see if she has any insights. But when he arrives at the Southern Sea, Kuan Yin's entourage nervously tells him that this maybe isn't a good time, since she hasn't left her room all day and specific. Oh my. Oh, uh, hey, great sage, now's not really a good time. Yeah, yeah, demons. Are inconsiderate like that. Um, <laughs> oh my. Specifically <laughs> left orders not to be disturbed, especially by Monkey. Showing commendable restraint, Monkey waits a whole several minutes before bolting for Kuan Yin's. He actually waited? I mean, yes, only several minutes, but he waited! I honestly am surprised. Like, I'm not even joking that that's actually more restraint than he's actually shown at all. Ever. Wow. Maybe Tripitaka's wearing off on him private bamboo grove. That's where he finds Kuan Yin, still in her pajamas, with zero makeup, zero hairstyling, glumly weaving a basket out of bamboo. Ugh, that's a mood. Monkey has no idea what's going on, but- This is in the bathroom. I'm just gonna- Kinda surprised they would talk about no makeup in Abode of Easter. Is that actually part of it? That's something Red added for just sheer fun enjoyment. 
he knows a bad day when he sees one, so he immediately backpedals and humbly begs Kuan Yin for help in rescuing Tripitaka. Kuan Yin tells him to wait outside, and this time, Monkey actually listens. Nobody in her entourage is entirely sure what's going on with her, but- Yep, we have no idea what's up. Huh. Monkey's been very thoughtful this episode. I mean, Pigsy was helpful, and Monkey was thoughtful. What the fuck is going on? But they can all tell that she seems really down and won't talk to anyone. Soon enough, Kuan Yin emerges with a completed basket, tells Monkey to follow her, and blasts off without even getting dressed. They also, they still have... Oh, she really does look like she's had a bad day. Still doing the thing where all the arms are showing behind her. Yeah, let's see if I can pull it up this way. Uh, there we Down go. Down and won't talk to anyone. Soon enough. Yeah, I don't really notice it first, but they do have all the hands outlined around them of all the positions. It's something they've done a lot for her. And frankly, the fact that she's intentionally shown as being underdressed and unprepared and yet, you know, still there. Huh. Neat. Kuan Yin emerges with a completed basket, tells Monkey to follow her, and blasts off without even getting dressed. They arrive at the river, and Monkey tries to explain what's happening to the others, except since he doesn't he actually no know idea, what's yeah. happening, he doesn't have much luck. Is she sick or something? Can she get sick or something? I mean, it's a river. Maybe it flows into the sea and they're polluting it? I have absolutely no idea how this would work out metaphysically. Kuan Yin floats out over the river, drops her basket in the water, recites a spell, and then retrieves the basket, which now contains exactly one very confused goldfish. What? Then she tells Monkey to go save Tripitaka. But what about the demon? Everyone say hello. So yeah, it turns out the demon was actually Kuan Yin's beloved pet goldfish, which got powered up by listening to her lectures and decided to turn into a demon and start eating kids. She was very upset when she realized he was missing and dove straight into finding a way to get him back, which is why she was so unput together today. Because of a goldfish. Pigs again. Okay, so one, demon is a state of mind, apparently. And choice two, why does she have a murder goldfish? No, let's talk about this. Listening to her powered him up enough to become a demon bent on eating a monk. And this just happened recently, so she's just having a bad day because her pet goldfish is... I don't even... That's just... And of course, it fits the scales, but Wow! Oh. It's a, okay, it actually is funny considering he was freaking out so much for a goldfish. Oh my god. A beat up by a goldfish. With the boss demon out of the way, they easily rescue Tripitaka, and meanwhile, the townsfolk are so awed by Quan, I woke up like this yin, that they all troop out to worship her and make a bunch of art about it. With Tripitaka unkidnapped and everything basically resolved, they still have to figure out a way to cross the river, which is when a huge white turtle shows up. Apparently, what? he's the guy who actually owns this river, and with the goldfish gone, he's back in charge. As thanks for restoring his position, he carries the gang across the water himself. He was kicked out by a goldfish. I mean, yeah, as a demon goldfish, but it was still a goldfish. <laughs> that actually is going to be funny for a while. <laughs> Asking only that they give him some tips from the Buddha to help him finally shed his turtle shell and gain a human form. So oh. with that fishy business sorted out, our heroes can continue on their journey to the West. And they do for a while. But the weather gets colder and the going gets harder, and eventually they run into a, let me spin this wheel here, huge mountain barring their way. It's not totally impassable. I mean, on the one hand, it's not a cave this time, at least. So it's slightly different than the rest. I'm sure there's a cave in there somewhere. But it's very narrow and treacherous and probably full of scary wild animals, so everyone's a bit on edge. As they make their way through the mountain, they eventually spot some signs of life. A oh. mansion and a cluster of houses nestled in one of the valleys. Tripitaka suggests they stop there to get some food and rest up. But unfortunately, but perhaps unsurprisingly, Monkey can see ominous dark clouds around the town and figures it's not- Really? The- I don't- it just- so now we have a good time frame for when overly sarcastic productions became aware of Jojo. And it's very ominous. Of course. Not worth the inevitable demon attack. Careful, he's learning. He convinces Tripitaka to stay put and- I don't know, he's kind of been up on it for a while, so... Stay here and don't go near the demon castle. Okay. And Pixie's actually warming himself up with Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> and let him go off and get them some food. Then he stops, comes back, draws a circle around Tripitaka with his staff, and tells him- Now when I say, don't go near the demon castle, monkey, I worry you here, wait till monkey's gone and then go anyway. Calm down. No, 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 he has a point. And I think it's going to be the wrong person he's drawing the circle around. 
not to step outside it. The circle will act as a ward and keep him safe from everything in the area as long as he doesn't leave it. Tripodaka oh. promises not to, and Monkey blasts off to find some food. But while Again. Monkey's pursuit of munchies inevitably gets him into his normal level of shenaniganery, Pigsy, who else, gets cold and bored and starts trying to convince Tripodaka to leave. After all, how can a circle drawn on the ground protect them from anything? Monkey did it, and that's usually enough reason. He must think we're idiots for buying this. Let's just go ask for the nice rich people for help. I mean... I think Pixie's right. Monkey does think that you specifically are an idiot. And it probably is completely accurate, too. That's just silly. Plus, Monkey's really fast, so it shouldn't be a problem for him to catch up to them, and moving around will help them keep warm. Tripataka is convinced, and they leave the circle and make a beeline for the spooky, ominous mansion. Oh, Pigsy heads inside he to look around and finds the whole space deserted, except for a very large skeleton in an upper room and three very shiny, warm vests. Pigsy grabs the vests and reports back, and Tripataka is mortified that he desecrated a grave, but Pigsy reasons the dead guy's not about to complain, and he and Sandy put him on, which I am very disappointed in both of you. Ah, uh, you're probably just cranky because you're cold. I mean, yes. I mean, it's a good thing they have a source of heat. Oh, wait. It's the horse. He's useless. It is weird that there's a giant skeleton, though, considering nothing else. But, okay, sure. Maybe it's a giant evil living dead. No, that's a different franchise. Turns out to be a bad idea, as the vests are enchanted and immediately tie them up. What? A trap? I can't believe it. So, unsurprisingly, this region is ruled by a demon, specifically the old and powerful single-horned rhinoceros king. And this what? whole place is a trap he set up. He has his minions cart the game. Uncertain bovine lineage? Wait, what? Whoa. The old and powerful single-horned- One-horned, uncertain, bovine-like animal king. Did they even know what a rhinoceros was at this period? I, there was, I guess maybe there was enough trade to recognize a rhinoceros because I don't think they had him in China. Although I could be mistaken because I don't really know where rhinoceros live normally. Horned rhinoceros king. And this whole place is a trap he set up. He has his minions cart the gang over to his... Trespassing and grave robbing. Not very virtuous, are you? In our defense, my disciple is an idiot. That's accurate cave and demands an explanation from Tripitaka, who apologizes for his disciple's rudeness and asks that they please be allowed to continue along their journey. But the demon's not exactly in the negotiating mood, since he knows if he eats Tripitaka, he'll regain his youth. But Pigsy Golden brags oh. that Tripitaka- You know what? He's actually the first person to mention Golden Cicada. Everyone else is like, oh yeah, if we eat the monk, we get immortality. And he's like, oh no, 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 no. Golden Cicada. I know that you, bitch. Th when they say this one's old, he is apparently very old. Ooh, that is actually interesting. I'm just going to go back again. Not exactly in the negotiating mood, since yeah. he knows if he eats Tripitaka, he'll regain his I youth. Recognize but Pigsy you. Bragg... Restoring my youth will make everything so much easier. It won't save you from Sun Wukong. I mean, he's right. But also, he's not going for immortality, he's just going for his youth. And just to make it easier, too. That's actually surprising. That's a lot more thought out than most people do. That Tripitaka's absent disciple is none other than the Monkey King, which does make the demon hesitate, Son? so he puts them in cold storage while he figures out what to do about Monkey. Speaking of whom, Monkey finds the circle empty, the suspicious demony town gone, and the gang nowhere to be found. What a surprise. He follows the horse hoof prince. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love this! I just the sheer done with it here. <laughs> Oh, Rad, this is an amazing bit of art. This entire video has impressed me so much. And just the sheer level of not even done with it, just I told them. I fucking told them. I don't even know where they went, but I have an idea, and I know how this is gonna go. Uh, also, the demon thinking not, oh shit, or hmm, gotta run away, or hmm, I'm gonna try to fight him more. We need leverage. So he's actually gonna be smart about this. Like, demons in this one are surprisingly intelligent. There's several really miles without finding anybody and is starting to get seriously disheartened when a couple of travelers tell him that they saw his companions getting kidnapped by a very powerful local demon. Monkey's about to run off to find him when the travelers reveal that they're actually the local mountain gods and ask him to leave the bowl of rice with them for safekeeping. Monkey oh. is pretty pissed they disguise themselves, but they point out that he is pretty dangerous to deal with on a bad day, which he acknowledges is fair. He's yes, don't give Monkey bad ideas when he's within smiting range. Also, smiting range is yes becoming self-aware. So Monkey starts searching for the inevitable demon cave and eventually spots a set of double doors in the mountainside guarded by a bunch of imps. He lands, knocks imps? on the door, and orders the demon to come out and face That's him. Now the demon is actually stoked about this because he's been craving a worthy opponent ever since he first descended to Earth. You know, I said that he was 
Wait, descended to Earth? Okay, so he's a former celestial like Sandy and Pixie. Also, you're not letting him in here, right? Wouldn't dream of it. We'll need much more room. Have they fought each other before? Earth. His imps bring him his lance and he goes to confront Monkey. They banter for a bit. The demon accuses Tripitaka of stealing from him. Monkey insists that Tripitaka is way too much of Yeah. It's an honor, Great Sage. I'll be very impressed if you still feel that way in five minutes. I kind of want this guy to hold his own. But we need to do something like that, and they fight. It's an epic battle, and they're just about evenly matched, and the demon compliments Monkey's strength from his infamous rampage through heaven. But clearly the demon is not actually that interested in fighting fair, since he sends his army of imps to attack Monkey, who responds by tossing his staff in the air and magically multiplying it to bombard them all at once. But it turns out this is what the demon was waiting for. He pulls out a white jade ring and throws it into the air. The copies all shoot back into one staff, which then gets sucked into the ring and disappears. What? Now completely disarmed, Monkey's at a serious disadvantage and has no choice. Is he? Is he, though? Let's just be completely fair. I don't think he needs the stuff. It's more just fun for him at this point. Choice but to run. The demon Feeding returns to his cave in triumph, and Monkey, in a bit of a daze, tries to figure out what to do next. But Monkey snaps out of the funk when he remembers the demon mentioned witnessing his rampage through heaven, meaning he was there. So he must have originally been a celestial. I couldn't even steal peaches on the clock without the Jade Emperor ordering my execution. How do three guys keep getting away with this? Or not, these guys keep getting away with this. Uh, mostly because I'm assuming they knew exactly what paperwork to file, and you didn't. And for everything, joking aside, that may or may not be the actual reason. Celestial spirit. Since it's always good to know your enemy, Monkey jets up to heaven to politely ask- Hey, how's my favorite most august emperor doing? Oh my god. On the one hand, ooh, they've really upgraded his throne to actually have the ring around it. On the other hand- Oh, uh, this guy's about to be pissed. If anyone up there can help him figure out who the demon is. He is a lot nicer when he doesn't have his staff. The Jade Emperor sets up an internal investigation, but can't find anyone missing, so he offers to send some guys. <laughs> He's so bored. <laughs> well, we can't find anyone unaccounted for, but we can send some people to beat him up. Really? Eh, I guess if it keeps Monkey off your everything, yeah, that might work. Odds to help Monkey fight the demon. Monkey's like, oh man, I mean... Sick offer, but like, I, I kind of kicked all your asses 500 years ago. I, I don't know if you forgot, but like, so if I couldn't do anything, I don't really know if any of you could. Oh, dude, do you still have that really sassy 12 year old? So Monkey grabs eternal 12 year old Prince Nada and his long suffering father, Devaraja Lee, plus an army of more generic divine soldiers and a couple of thunder squires to throw lightning at the problem. So now. Are they really? Okay, let's be careful here. Let me at him! Oh my god. Monkey is the thoughtful one. He actually is becoming self-aware. And this person learned nothing. Nada insists on going first, and he and the demon fight for a while before Nada switches into his three-headed, six-armed war form and starts really kicking Damn. ass. However, when he tosses his weapons into the air to multiply them, the demon pulls out the ring again, and all the weapons vanish. Nada runs for his life, and the Thunder Squires quietly... Okay, who's next? <laughs> oh, so he had... And the entire thing with him is, don't throw your weapons. Yeah... Granted, I still think Monkey could probably beat his ass. Like, literally just punch him. Thank their better judgment that they didn't well, try throwing their lightning, too. The they try time, and though. think of a weapon the ring couldn't suck up, and they think that maybe fire could work. So Monkey zips back up to heaven to conscript the help of the Star of Fiery Virtue, the Whoa. god in charge of Mars, who turns out to be a mild-mannered bureaucrat who's significantly less powerful than the other warriors in play, but he's really? happy to help out if he can. This time, Devaraja Lee provokes the demon, and when he comes out to fight, the Star of Fiery Virtue... Okay, one, damn, two... You know, I was really expecting... That's a, that's apparently a chair, huh? Happy to help out if he can. This time, Dave... This is so exciting! Yeah, just stay behind me. You... Down there, terror... And, okay, so he's... Raja what? Lee provokes the demon, and when he comes out to fight, the Star of Fiery Virtue unleashes an onslaught of flaming weapons and fire spirits, which are all sucked into the ring and disappear. Dang it. Guess that's what we get for relying on Steve from Heaven Accounting. But Monkey's not out of idea. Are they just throwing everything at him because it... They're leaning into what he can do because it's like, oh no, he took our weapons. Stop throwing things! Ideas just yet. This time he goes to the Dark Vastness Palace and conscripts the Star of Watery Virtue. Wielding a small white jade chalice containing half the waters of the Steve, Yellow River, Frank. the Star of Watery Virtue joins the fight. But when he unleashes the water into the cave, the demon uses the ring to reverse the water, sending the deluge down the mountain instead. Unfortunately, the Star of Watery Virtue can't put the water back, so they have to wait for it to drain away. Okay, one. Neat. Two. Apparently the prince can't uh, swim. So that ring is actually really interesting in the sense that it's not just sucking things up. It can actually control them in the sense that it made it regular water. Huh. It's actually way more versatile than I thought. 
and Monkey gets so dang frustrated he storms up to the cave and demands the demon fight him hand to hand. The demon actually agrees, and they have a spectacular martial arts duel, was which eventually for escalates into a full-on brawl when the other gods and demons join in. Monkey also duplicates himself a bunch, but the demon uses the ring to vanish the copies, and the sides retreat to reevaluate their next moves. The gods compliment Monkey on his badassness and cool form, and David Raja Lee says he. His only real edge is that jade ring. We should aim to take it. Wait, jade ring? Is he part of the Jade Emperor? Nah, that couldn't be the case. He's pretty sure Monkey is the better fighter. Without the Jade Ring, the demon can't win, so they should probably find a way to steal it. One of the Thunder Squires points out that Monkey is probably the best qualified person in the universe to steal something like that. Can if only we knew someone who once robbed heaven itself. I don't even... <laughs> the Squire points it out, but the actual guy who's met him is... <laughs> Oh my god, I love this. Considering how much stuff he stole from heaven back in the day, guys, you're gonna make him blush. Oh so Monkey my turns god, into a fly remembered. and sneaks into the cave, past the demons, who are all having a big party, and finds a hall with everything the ring vanished in it. He can't find the ring itself, but that doesn't matter so much because he finds his staff, and is so stoked to have it back, he immediately smashes his way out of the cave in celebration. The demon and his army obviously chase him, and they battle for about three hours. But when the sun goes down, oh, the demon calls for time out, Monkey says no timeouts, and the demon bolts back into the cave. Oh. Everyone showers Monkey with compliments and praise, and he figures, that now that the demon's all tuckered out, he can just sneak in and look for the ring on his own time. So Monkey turns into a cricket and sneaks into the cave, but when he spots the demon getting ready for bed, he notices a problem. The demon is wearing the jade ring on his arm. Monkey tries and fails to dislodge it, and eventually decides to do the next best thing. Cut he goes off. back to the hall with all the weapons, reduplicates himself, steals all the weapons, frees all the fire spirits, and smashes his way out of the now-burning cave, riding a fire dragon like the first-class badass he is. The demon is very unhappy that his cave is now super on fire, <laughs> while the divine army is very happy to have all their weapons. Weapons back. But yep. in spite of how super cool that play of the game was, the demon. I don't know. I mean, Steve from Accounting doesn't have his water back. That's still just gone. Demon still has the ring, and it doesn't take very long for him to use it to steal all their weapons back. Boo. So the heavenly. I mean, on the other hand, he's literally just putting them in the hole. The host dissolves into arguing, blame placing, and infighting, and Monkey finds himself living out his worst nightmare of being the voice of reason. So he decides that when all else. <laughs> I love this! I love this! This is literally the probably the worst fight for him possible. Not because of the demon who steals his stuff, but because it's forcing him to be reasonable. I love it. I, I just I, I love this. Oh wow. Okay, everyone, play nice till I get back. Do I need to draw another circle? I will draw another circle. Miles fails, he should probably check in with the Buddha and see if he has any ideas. So oh. Monkey flies off to the Thunderclap Monastery and drops in on the man himself. Oh boy, nobody tell Tripitaka it's that easy. Buddha is kind of surprised to- <laughs> Oh yeah, because he's Buddhist, he doesn't know it. Because he's been in dealing with Quan Yin, but not Buddha, well, their Buddha self. <laughs> oh wow, that's, that's just- I want to read that again. Monastery and drops in on the man himself. Oh boy. I feel very frustrated for some reason. Starting now? Buddha is kind of surprised to see him there all alone without Tripitaka. You're early and unsupervised. Funny story about that. Because they were going to the Buddha's location as the final endpoint for the journey to the West, and he literally just jumped ahead to the end. Oh my god. I just. I hope he mentioned this to Tripitaka without realizing it, and that he just has the unbelievable urge to commit violence for the first time. Taka and the others, and Monkey fills him in on the situation. Now, Buddha figures out who the demon is pretty much immediately, oh? but refuses to tell Monkey because- Oh no, you don't. I know you'll start smack-talking the minute you get back. Rude. Also accurate. Yeah, yeah, that's- yeah, that's pretty much accurate. Because he knows Monkey doesn't know how to shut up, and would instantly brag about how he learned the demon's true identity, and he just really doesn't want to deal with that right now. So instead, he has his 18 Arhats gather 18 grains of cinnabar sand to magically paralyze the demon. I gotta ask, what is cinnabar sand? They may or may not tell us, but I'm actually curious in case they don't. Also, I just realized the Buddha has the least crazy aura out of everyone. The Jade Emperor has heaven and the chat, like the entire chair, and they're all green, and the little aura around them. Quan Yin has all of the glowing hands everywhere and admittedly being somewhat crazy. And now Buddha's just like, yeah, what's up? I got a halo. Monkey jokes around with the Arhats, who they seem all like have the dudes, and they fly clouds. back to the mountain. Monkey goes to lure the demon out, but then- Ready for another round. Do you really think that'll stop me from killing your friends? Considering it's worked so far, yes. 
Then the demon taunts him about how he's super gonna kill his friends, so a monkey drops the goofs and attacks him for real. The oh, Arnhards shit. make their move and dump the sand on the demon, and it grows into a huge pile that threatens to bury him completely, until he uses the ring to make it disappear. Man, this guy sucks. <laughs> Get it? Look, if I thought of it earlier, I would have said it earlier. But two of the- Now that that didn't work, you should go talk to Lao Tzu. Wait, really? Surprising. The Arhats tell Monkey that Buddha secretly told them that if the sand didn't work, Monkey should go and ask Lao Tzu for help. Monkey's cranky, they couldn't just tell him that in the first place, but you know how Buddha does, so he jets off to go bother Lao Tzu. Yeah, and he's also giving himself an out because surely the Buddha doesn't know who he is because he would have definitely done that immediately. It's literally the written form of plausible deniability. Kind of love how it works. Tzu. But as he's filling him in on the situation, he noticed something- Keep gate closed. Green as your buffalo bull. What are you looking at? Green buffalo is your bull. Ah. I'm assuming it has one horn. Something's missing from Lao Tzu's lab. His green buffalo is conspicuously absent. Apparently, he had one of those. And apparently, the lad guarding it thought eating a random elixir pill he found on the ground was a super good idea, and it knocked him out for a week straight, during which time the green buffalo escaped and headed to Earth to fulfill his dreams of fighting worthy opponents and eating monks. Searching That is twice now. Twice in this episode, it's a pet. That monkey is being screwed around with by one of the god's pets. Considering he kicked all of the gods' asses other than Buddha. But apparently the god's pets were the real problems all along. If only they had sent Paw Patrol after him, that would have been unbeatable. Watching the lab, Lao Tzu realizes his diamond snare is also missing, the thing he used to finally capture Monkey during his rampage through heaven. Apparently, oh. that's the true form of the jade ring the demon's been using to steal everyone's stuff. Ah. Lao Tzu grabs his fan and storms off for a little disciplinary training. When Monkey and Lao Tzu arrive on the scene, <laughs> the demon freaks out and hucks the ring. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, ooh, that's not good. He's probably not in a good mood right now. Oh. Which doesn't work out so hot when Lao Tzu catches it with one hand. Then he swings the fan and the demon immediately reverts to his true form, no problem. Lao Tzu oh. leads the formerly demon, now just your garden variety green buffalo, back to his lab. Monkey and Buddha says hi. How? Because he cheats. <laughs> and they literally just got a fetch quest of an old man getting his pet back. He retrieves the weapons and rescues the others, no problem. And with that eventful trip down memory lane all sorted out, they are finally back on track to continue their journey to the West. Will Tripitaka's luck with mountains and rivers finally improve? Will Pigsy nope. learn to stop being the inciting incident in every episode? Nope. And what was that thing about an empire of only women? Find out next time on Journey to the West. And this episode of God Damn It Pigsy was brought to you by every god's pet being a bigger badass than said gods themselves somehow and yet they also are manhandled by the gods that own them who couldn't manhandle monkey although i mean technically Lao Tzu did with the ring but we're gonna ignore that <sighs> oh, I, I love this i absolutely love this because it's so ridiculous and it didn't involve agartha i'm very much okay with that i mean it might be completely different here i'm hoping it's completely different here please let it be completely different here but I'm going to have it in the back of my mind exactly what Agartha was like in Fake Grand Order, and I'm just going to be sitting here going, This is fine. This is fine. Yeah. So hopefully that's not next episode. <laughs> I'm going to keep telling myself that until I'm proven wrong. We'll see what happens, though. Otherwise, you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. And if you like this, subscribe. Let me know what I should check out when we finally catch up to everything on this. So far, I've been told Pope Fight was good, but also literally everything else. So I probably have a lot of things that are going to be really cool to look at. If it sounds like I'm really excited, it's because I am. I like finding things like this that just kind of hit my style of humor and have a ton of things I can get into because it's just fun, man. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to head out, maybe do a live stream late at night because fuck it, why not? And I'll see you guys later. Adios.